Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm doing the July Mission Inspiration Challenge as set by Mike Deacon and I'll leave links to Mike's channel and to his Facebook group below. For this page I've decided to use a piece of loose leaf A4 mixed media paper. So, step one is to apply a base page colour with a baby wipe. So I'm actually taking three colours here because I want a fairly dark background but I don't want it to be solid black. I'm not mixing the three colours together on the plate but rather I'll just pick up some of each colour on the baby wipe and then I'll allow them to mix on the actual page itself. So I keep applying the colour until I've covered the full page. I then just go over it a bit with the baby wipe just to try and lift some of the colour off a little. And after each stage, where necessary, I'll give it a quick dry. So, stage two is to glue tissue or napkin fragments to the page. Now, this is some tissue paper that I had previously stamped myself. I'm just using the edge of a ruler to tear it, because often, if I just tear it, I, with it without the aid of the ruler, I get really, really rough edges. Just kind of looking here at where I might place them but then I decide just to get on with it and glue them down. So I'm using matte medium glue. I get a little bit heavy handed here and actually end up tearing the tissue. Then it sticks to my fingers and I have a bit of a job getting it down and onto the page. So for the rest I decide that I'll actually put the glue onto the page and then the tissue on top of that. You'll see that the tissue is quite delicate, it's quite fragile and every so often I get a hole in it but you know that doesn't matter. So again just giving it a quick dry. So step three is to add a thin layer of white gesso or paint. Now when I start to do this I decide that because I want the dark background that actually adding white is not going to serve its purpose for me. So I actually start to mix in some of the colours that I'd already used on the background. That proved to be too light for me so I'm adding a bit more of the indigo at this stage. It's still at this point pulling in some of the, the white, so I still feel it's a little bit too light. And so you'll see that I go on to add a bit more black just to darken it. And I do this until I'm happy with it. So whilst the challenge had been to add white, I think what you have to keep in mind here is to uh, really stay true to the page that you're trying to, to create. So step three is, I, I beg your pardon, step four is to add texture paste through a stencil. So I'm using a modeling paste here and I'm just applying it with an old plastic card. I'm trying to keep it quite thin because this can take quite a while to dry and you'll see that it has actually picked up some of the colour that was already on the card but again I don't, I don't mind that, it just all, all adds to the interest. So step five is to add two contrasting colours and I've chosen sparkling H2Os for this. So I'm starting 
the raspberry one, just adding some water to get it uh, activated. And I'll just apply it across the painting where I think appropriate. And I'm not concerned that it starts to uh, get picked up by the stars. I'm quite happy for them to have a bit of colour to them. So again, I've given that a quick dry and I now go on to use the moss colour. Just the same technique as with, as with the raspberry. Now I'm just taking that sheet of kitchen towel just to pick up any excess damp spots. So step six is to adhere book text fragments. I wasn't entirely certain what I was going to do with this uh, and then just hit on an idea to kind of create mountains. I felt that that would fit in with what I was trying to achieve here. And again, just using the map medium to adhere it. And I go over it with a very light layer. Now, I did feel that uh, the hills or the mountains there were a bit too stark in terms of the colour, a bit too bright. So I just took some colour and added it on. And there I'm just cutting off the rough edges. So step seven was to stamp an image or patterns. So I'm just using a bird stamp. I think that originally came from Hobbycraft. Just using that with some silver ink. And you see that I take a bit of time just looking at where I'm going to place them. And again, I just give them a very quick blast with the heat gun. I then take a piece of bubble wrap. I just want to add a bit more interest and uh, just use the same silver ink. I don't want it to be too heavy, so I just touch it very lightly. Step eight is to add a focal image or shape. So that's just a roll of uh, double-sided tape that I'm really just using as a guide. And I'm using those same colours as before, some of the white gesso uh, and black indigo etc that, that were all already on the plate. And I'm just building that up until I get the effect that I want. So adding in some dark there, but then you'll see that I go back and add some more white on top of that. So that's part of my main focal image and the other one is to add this piece that I cut out from a magazine. This time I'm just going to use some uh, stick glue to actually stick this down because the piece is quite small and it's quite thin in places and I don't want to risk tearing it. Now I did wonder about 
going over this totally in black to turn it into a silhouette, but actually I quite liked the bit of colour that it gave. So step nine is to add a handwritten song lyric quote. And this is a Pentel white pen that I'm using here. And then off camera, I just go over that again, just to make it a little bit bolder. And I add the composer's name. So at this point, I want to just put a slightly harder edge on the moon. Uh, I was going to do it freehand, but then I just take that tape again as a guide just to go round it. And I also want to just take a bit of artistic license here to uh, add in a few highlights on the birds just to show where the moonlight might be touching them. And just doing the same with the mountains. So the final step is to finish with a border of your choice. And what I decided to do was to use some glitter glue just to go round the edges to create a very loose border. So I'm putting the glue down and then just spreading it with my finger. Now this was very inexpensive glue. I think it came from the, the children's craft section in a supermarket. So once I've gone round all the, the edges with that, I just decide to go round the outer edge with some black ink. At this stage I decide that I do want a bit more detail and I just want to put a little bit of a shadow round the balloons just so that they'll stand out a little. I should have gone just a, a straight line there but uh, I think I just hesitated a little bit when I was doing it. So later on I do correct that line a bit by going back over it with a white pen. And I just add a little bit to the birds. Again, just to, to give them a bit of depth so that they stand out a bit more. So I'm looking it over now just to see that I'm happy with it, but I actually decide that I want to use a little bit more of that glitter glue. I just feel that that bit in the centre could uh, benefit from just a couple of touches of that. And I always think that's the thing with these challenges, that uh, you've got to be reasonably happy with, with your finished piece. And if there's something that you feel is unfinished, then, you know, just go back and, and do it, whether or not it's in the same sequence as the challenge has been set out. And here I just decide to add in a tiny bit of the blue glitter. Not too much, but just to give a little bit of added effect. And there we have it, that's my finished piece. Fly me to the moon, let me play among the stars. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, then please do give it the thumbs up and uh, you know, I'd be happy to hear your, your comments. So please feel free to comment below. 
And if you haven't already, then please subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, then thank you very much for that. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you'll join me again next time. Bye for now. Thank you.